Welcome to Psych Insight, the channel where we view the world through the lens of psychology. Our aim is to unravel the complex web of human behavior and thought processes, and equip you with insights that can transform your interactions and understanding of yourself and others. In today's video, we're diving deep into the intriguing world of defensiveness, listening, moods, confirmation, and resistance. So buckle up, stay tuned, and join us on this enlightening journey. Don't forget to share this video with your friends, subscribe to our channel for more insightful content, and give us a like if you find our videos valuable. Now let's delve into the intrigue of defensiveness. Have you ever wondered why people become defensive when their opinions are challenged? This intriguing question takes us into a fascinating exploration of human psychology and the inherent competitive nature that lies within us all. When we are faced with an opposing viewpoint or a convincing argument, our instinct is often to dig our heels in and defend our position. This isn't just stubbornness or pride, it's a natural response ingrained in us from our earliest days. From our childhood, we develop a protective side that shields our self-concept and self-worth. This protective side is closely linked to what is known as our self-opinion, a fascinating concept that plays a crucial role in our interactions. Our self-opinion is essentially how we perceive our own personality and sense of value. It has three distinct qualities, each playing a vital role in shaping our responses. Firstly, everyone possesses a fundamental belief in their own autonomy, intelligence, and goodness. This belief is so ingrained that challenging it can often trigger defensiveness. Secondly, our self-opinion can exist in a neutral state, a sort of resting phase that is neither defensive nor open. Finally, our self-opinion can be confirmed, a state that allows for suggestion and insinuation. But how do we bring someone from a defensive or neutral state to a state of confirmed self-opinion? The key lies in providing a sense of inner security. This involves demonstrating respect, appreciating their experiences, and creating an environment in which they can feel comfortable to laugh and be themselves. It's vital to practice empathy and authenticity, as any hint of insincerity can instantly raise defenses. It's important to understand that directly asking for what you want or being overly transparent can often backfire. Honesty, when not handled delicately, can lead to passive aggressiveness or resistance. Instead, we must learn to navigate the complex world of human interaction with finesse and subtlety. As we delve deeper, we will uncover the strategies to become a master persuader and soften people's resistance. Stay tuned for a fascinating journey into the art of listening, the power of mood, the importance of confirmation, and the strategy of resistance. How often do you truly listen to others? Listening might be the key to unlock people's defenses. In a world where everyone is eager to voice their thoughts and opinions, truly listening to someone can be a rare gift. But beyond being a nice gesture, it's also a potent strategy to soften people's resistance. Transforming yourself into a deep listener, however, isn't as simple as it sounds. Listening with full attention is a skill, and like any skill, it requires practice. It's easy to get caught up in our own thoughts and feelings, to plan our next sentence while the other person is still speaking. But true listening is more than just waiting for your turn to talk. It's about immersing yourself in the other person's perspective, seeking to understand rather than to respond. Each interaction with someone else is an opportunity to learn something new, to gain insights into their world. The more curious you are, the more you'll learn, and the more you'll be able to guide the conversation in a way that encourages them to open up. But guiding a conversation isn't about steering it towards your agenda. It's about creating a space where the other person feels safe and validated. It's about asking open-ended questions that invite them to share more of their thoughts and feelings, to delve deeper into their insecurities. Insecurities, after all, are the keys that unlock people's defenses. When people reveal their insecurities, they're showing you their vulnerabilities, their fears, their desires. They're giving you a glimpse into their self-opinion, their perception of who they are and what they're worth. So, listen, really listen. Not just to the words they're saying, but to the emotions behind those words. Listen to the silences between the words, to the things they're not saying. Listen with empathy, with respect, with genuine interest. Because the more the person talks, the more they reveal about their insecurities. Have you considered how your mood can influence others? The emotions we radiate have a ripple effect, touching everyone we interact with. This is the essence of infecting people with the proper mood, a crucial strategy in softening people's resistance. Consider this scenario. You've had a tough day, but you decide to put on a smile and exude positivity. 
In no time, those around you start to mirror your cheerful demeanor, their spirits lifted. Why is this so? It's because our moods are infectious, they spread and influence the people around us. This is not a mere assumption, but a scientifically proven fact. Now let's delve a little deeper into this strategy. To successfully infect people with the proper mood, it's important to act relaxed and anticipate an enjoyable experience. We all know that person who enters a room and immediately lightens the atmosphere, don't we? They're relaxed, they're expecting a good time, and their energy is contagious. However, it's not just about projecting positivity and relaxation, it's also about acceptance. Acceptance is a powerful mood enhancer. When people feel judged, they tend to become defensive, closing off any potential for positive influence. But when they sense acceptance, their guards drop, making them more receptive to your influence. So, the next time you find yourself in a situation where you need to soften someone's resistance, remember the power of mood. Radiate positive energy, be relaxed, anticipate an enjoyable experience, and most importantly, accept people as they are. Remember, your mood isn't just a personal matter. It's a tool that can shape the atmosphere around you, a tool that can break down walls of resistance and open doors to influence. So take control of your mood and use it wisely, because it's not just about how you feel, but how you make others feel. The power of mood can be a powerful tool in softening people's resistance. So harness this power and see the difference it can make in your interactions. How do you feel when someone confirms your self-opinion? Let's dive into that. We all have an inherent self-opinion. It's our personal perspective of who we are, our abilities, and our worth. This self-opinion is often like an internal compass, guiding our actions and reactions. And when someone else confirms this self-opinion, it's like they're saying, I see you, I understand you, I acknowledge your worth. Now let's talk about a key strategy in the art of persuasion, confirming people's self-opinion. In the grand chess game of human interaction, this move is a powerful one. It's not about manipulation, but about understanding, respect, and empathy. Consider this. Everyone feels autonomous, intelligent, and good in some way. So when you challenge any of these universal traits, it's likely to make people defensive. But what if you do the opposite? What if you confirm their sense of autonomy, intelligence, and goodness? Suddenly, that defensiveness subsides. But here's the catch. This confirmation needs to be sincere. We can all sense when someone is simply flattering us without meaning it. So choose qualities that you genuinely admire. This sincerity is the key to unlocking the power of this strategy. Now let's take this a step further. Everyone is insecure about something. It could be their abilities, their appearance, or their social skills. Instead of triggering these insecurities, what if we flatter the qualities people are insecure about? What if we praise their efforts? Doing so not only affirms their self-opinion, but also bolsters their confidence. Remember, it's about praising the effort, not the talent. The effort insinuates that they've earned something through hard work. It's a validation of their journey, their struggle, and their perseverance. And here's the golden rule. Never ask for help immediately after praising someone. It would just come off as insincere flattery. In the end, confirming someone's self-opinion isn't just about persuasion. It's about fostering understanding, empathy, and respect. It's about acknowledging the inherent worth in every individual. Affirming someone's self-opinion can be a powerful way to soften their resistance. How can resistance be used as a strategy to soften people's resistance? This question might sound paradoxical, but it offers an insight into human psychology. It's all about channeling resistance, taking what appears to be an obstacle and turning it into a bridge for connection. Let's start with emotions. Everyone has them, and they often drive our actions and reactions. Instead of confronting these emotions head on, we can use them as a means to create understanding. By acknowledging and validating someone's emotions, we can guide them towards a more productive response. It's about turning the tide of emotions, so they flow towards a common goal rather than against it. Next, let's talk about language. The words we use, how we say them, they're all a reflection of our thoughts and feelings. By using the same language as the person we're trying to persuade, we create a sense of familiarity. We show them that we understand their perspective and that we're on the same page. This can significantly lessen their defenses and open up a path for meaningful dialogue. Finally, consider rigidity. Some people have a natural inclination to resist change or to stick to their ways. This can seem like a roadblock, but it can also be an opportunity. By giving them something to rebel against, 
we can subtly guide them towards the change we seek. It's about using their resistance as a springboard, propelling them in the direction we want. So there you have it. Resistance doesn't always have to be a barrier. It can be a tool, a strategy to soften people's defenses. It's about understanding their emotions, mirroring their language and using their rigidity to our advantage. Resistance, if used effectively, can be a tool to soften people's resistance, leading to a more harmonious interaction. It's not about manipulation, but about creating connections and fostering understanding. After all, when we understand each other better, we can work together more effectively. Until next time, keep practicing the art of persuasion, stay curious, and keep learning.